Boas pessoal, bem. relativamente a... vou aqui mostrar, começar por mostrar o print de sexta-feira. Foi um dia muito fraguinho. 40 corridas, deu quase um centímetro por corrida. Uh, vou começar aqui a mostrar este print porque na sexta-feira deu erro. Acabou por dar erro e porque tinha o disco cheio de vídeos, tive que apagar alguns, por isso não consegui acabar por gravar este de sexta-feira. Fica aqui, foi bastante fraco, tive aqui um grande red, um grande red, mas acabei por recuperar tudo. Até digo que às 17 horas estava com lucro, é isso mesmo, às 17 horas estava com lucro, mas depois acabei por, por perder tudo. Aqui, acabei por perder este pequeno lucro, comecei a ficar muito distraído e acabei por perder às 17 até ao até às, até às quase às 8 horas acabei por perder isso de 8 horas mas pronto vamos lá para mais um dia ver como é que isto corre neste sábado in play extended 2 miles they have 8 flights of hurdles to jump and on the inside bold reason is the first one to begin bold reason has reached the first flight and are coming together there which is that blue ribbon has gone blue ribbon has unseated the rider the coming together was between both the blue ribbon Looks like Sid Hoodie was also involved in that skirmish as they took flight number one. But Bold Reason is out in front and Sam Twiston Davis is up on his feet okay, having been unseated at the first from Blue Ribbon. So Bold Reason makes the run down the hill and has a clear advantage now of around about five lengths to the mayor, Sid Hoodie, who is racing in second position as they complete the turn into the home straight. In third is Al Curb, racing on the inside of King of the Cotswolds, who is in fourth. And then New Zealander on the outside of Simple Rules. And then Clemento at the back of the field is Charles Brun. On then towards flight number two they go, preceded by the loose horse. And it is Bold Reason who skips over it with a lead of about seven lengths now to in second Sid Hoodie and Al Kerb and King of the Cotswolds and then New Zealander towards the outside. And already Bold Reason is over flight number three, which will be the last in a circuit's time. So they come up past the enclosures with a circuit to go, still preceded by the loose blue ribbon, who we lost at flight number one. But it's Bold Reason who's out in front and leads now by the best part of ten lengths to Sid Hoodie racing in second. Al Kerb on the inside rail is in third. King of the Cotswolds, the light blue, in fourth position. A length and a half away, Simple Rules goes into the turn racing in fifth. Around the outside is New Zealander, who's just been pushed along to hold a position. Then Clemento, and still the back marker is Charles Brun. So into the back straight, and on now towards halfway, and flight number four. And it's Bold Reason and James Best still clear as they come now on towards the wings of the first of the trio of flights taken down the back. Bold Reason clear, still by 10 lengths to Sid Hoodie over in second, Al Kerb in third, King of the Cotswolds in fourth, Simple Rules in fifth position. In sixth is New Zealander, then being ridden along Clemento, and so too is Charles Brun, as now Bold Reason begins to come back to the field, not quite as quick in the air over that flight. The lead, though, is still around about eight lengths or so. In second place is Sid Hoodie, and they race on now towards the final flight taken down the back. Bold Reason comes to it, over safely. And trying to maintain that advantage, which is seen moving into second, King of the Cotswolds to the outside of Sid Hoodie. They're now in a dispute of second and third places. Al Kerb is in fourth, a break then of three lengths, opening up to Simple Rules, who will make the turn in fifth. Clemento has now passed New Zealander, and totally tailed off is Charles Brun. So they make the run down the hill for the second and final time in the Betway handicap hurdle, and Bold Reason still has a clear lead. As they make the run inside the final half mile, that lead is about six lengths now over Sid Hoodie in second. King of the Cotswolds in third. Al Kerb made the turn in fourth. A break then of four lengths to Clemento, staying onto the outside of Simple Rolls. As they race on now inside the final two and a half furlongs and on towards the second last. And James Best and Bold Reason still have the lead. 
over two out. Bold Reason didn't get very high. The lead's reduced to four lengths now by Sid Hoodie and by Al Curb, who switches to, Al, uh, to Sid Hoodie's inside. They're over the final flight, and it is now Sid Hoodie in the centre who claims the lead. Over on the far side is Bold Reason. Down the outside is Al Curb. They've got another half furlong to go, and it's Harry Bannister on the mare, Sid Hoodie, who are going clear on the run towards the line. A winner here for Alex Hales as Sid Hoodie wins under Harry Bannister. In second came Al Curb. In third, Market Reason, suspended. In fourth, King of the Cuddy. Gates back and away Mark, they go. Market in play. The letter gold British EBF Phillies restricted novice over the uh, seven furlongs. Good start from value theory in the green and blue colours. Annie Song is in the red racing in second. Shut up and dance is really pulling extremely hard. Then after that, the all blue uh, Godolphin colours of Tinderbox racing in third. Rouge et Noir in the lilac is in a prominent position as well. Then the sheepskin noseband of Senorita, first crowd in the diamond colours. There then followed by Isamel, who's just being driven along already. And Shut Up and Dance, having been restrained, is now at the rear of the field, making their way down towards the final four furlongs or so. And out in front is Annie's song. To value theory, the green with the blue cap towards the right as we look at the tinderbox, the Godolphin blue, is racing quite kindly in third, just off the back of the speed. They're then followed by Rouge et Noir and first crowd towards the left as we look at them. Senorita, Isamel is being driven along and then Shut Up and Dance is at the rear of the field. Down towards the final two and a half they go. Annie Song, Value Theory, little to choose between the pair. Value Theory is still travelling strongly and now goes into the lead. Annie Song in second, Tinderbox towards the left as we look at them. Followed by Rouge et Noir, they've just gone on from the rest. Down towards the closing stages, inside the final furlong and a half. And it's Value Theory that leads to in second position, the red on the near side, Annie Song. Then Rouge et Noir, Tinderbox not finding a great deal and it's value theory with the benefit of some experience goes on now by a couple of lengths and is bounding away in the closing stages value theory left as admiral d as they race the end of the first 200 yards they're tracked by the top weight three bags full racing together the two fillies cherry bloom and pepsi with a cap and dropped in a shinkinson Continuing on towards the halfway stage, and it's Jarvis in front of Swift One and Admiral D. These three covered by two lengths. In fourth place is three bags full, and then with the light blue cap, Cherry Bloom. Final couple, Pepsi with a cap, and Shinkinson. Racing on past the junction of the courses, and it's Jarvis extending his advantage to a length and a half over Swift One and the orange and blue. Darkish colours of Admiral D, and on the left is three bags full, then Cherry Bloom Shinkinson relegates Pepsi with a cap to be the back marker. Racing inside the final two furlongs, Jarvis still in front from Swift One trying to challenge. On the far side is three bags full, then Admiral D, Cherry Bloom Shinkinson, Pepsi with a cap, three across the track. Jarvis, Swift One, and three bags full inside the final hundred yards, and it's Swift One racing on for Mike. Is she as this cold gains the winning bracket from Jarvis? Market suspended. One who's dropped in blessing at the back end of the field. A solid stone that tows them through the opening furlong, little more than a length ahead over the keenly going real world, who's got quite warm beforehand. You can see him sweating down his neck and a little wider out his moving time in the yellow jacket. Derab follows those a further two lengths adrift with up the inside Felix in the red jacket. Another two, two and a half lengths back is a Fox Tell, and then follows Blue Cub, and finally Bless him, who at this stage would be around about ten lengths off the leader as they now prepare to make this left-handed turn and racing on for their final seven furlongs. They're being led by Solid Stone. Solid Stone by around about a length over moving time in second place. David Egan now on board with the Royal Hunt Cup winner Real World in third. Then the half-brother to enable Derab up towards the outside, the pink cap. With up the rails running next, Felix. A length further behind these is Foxtel. Two lengths back is Blue Cup and a similar margin to Bless Him who whips them in as they're on the home turn and now about to hit halfway. Straightening up in front is Solid Stone. Leads up a length and a half to in second position move in time with it travelling nicely but in a pocket at the moment at Real World. Then a little wider out, Derab, who seems content on keeping him there as well. Then further back to find Felix with up the inside Blue Cup. A little wider out in a sheepskin noseband is Fox Tell, and still bless him, can see them all. They head down inside the final three furlongs now. Solid Stone, the far side, being ridden along by Richard Kingscoat. And moving time is coming there strongly. Down the outside is Derab, then Real World, who's now been popped the question back in fourth, and all of the others who are being headed off by...
by Felix have something to prove from where they are, making the run towards the final furlong and a half. Derab is now striving to come up alongside Moving Time and does so without into the clear real world who's starting to run home powerfully, but getting first run is Derab. Derab leads them into the final 100 yards of the journey, but real world is finishing with a flourish down the outside and is cutting back Derab with every stride to in the end get up and win nicely. A salute of the crowd. Market the suspended in play. Second flight on the wood side, and Hillview took that nicely on the outside of Sweet Beat with Caligogo, the favourite, on the inner. These are the first three, and not a huge amount of ground to choose between them, with Do No Wrong and Callum Beauty then in fourth position on the inside of Bally Nagran and Sam Coulter. Exit 10, Ross Chapman on the outside, and then Big Business, second last, and Keeper Chris and Henry Brook just about last of all as they're going a, a sensible pace heading around seven acres and making the run towards the other side of the course and uh, flight number three, which will be the last in a couple of circuits time. And getting over it this time, Hillview is racing on the outside of Sweet Beat with Caligogo on the inner and now making their run past the exit back to the village and a fair bit of galloping to do before they get to flight number four. Caligogo running on the inside of Sweet Beat with Hillview and William Shanahan on the outside of the three as they go by the Priory. There'd only be four or five lengths separating all eight of them that set out. Do No Wrong is just on the heels of the leaders in fourth position with Ballinagran next and Exit 10 on the outside. Keeper Chris and Big Business the last two but well in touch as they now meet the fourth. And getting over it just in front, Caligogo on the inside of uh, Sweet Beat. Sweet Beat representing... Mike Sowersby with Aaron Anderson in the saddle and on the outside is Hillview with Do No Wrong continuing to follow them as they've almost completed their first circuit in the opener. Ballina Gran is in fifth, Exit 10 is sixth on the outside with Keeper Chris and uh, Big Business, Sean Quinlan last of all. So going through where they started and making the run towards flight number five of the 11, still a fair way to go and coming into the first one, Caligogo looking to follow up a win at Perth at the beginning of the month. Lands just ahead of Sweet Beat and Hillview, but less than a length separating the three of them. With Do No Wrong in fourth position in between the two flights on the wood side. Ballina Gran is then on the outside, still followed by Exit 10, Keeper Chris and Big Business minding their own business at the back. Getting over the next one. Slightly a novice at that one was Sweet Beat in between Caligogo and Hillview as they leave the wood side behind them, having taken six of the 11 flights, making the run towards the seventh on the turn. And it is Caligogo, Connor O'Farrell, looking for his 11th winner of the season and leading the way in the William Hill Lengthen Your Odds Novices Hurdle. Sweet Beat and Hillview still not giving the leader much peace with Do No Wrong next in the field, followed by Ballina Gran. The order hasn't changed much. This will be the last in another circuit's time. So going around once more, Caligogo still leads the back two, Keeper Chris and uh, Big Business. Big Business, the best turned out winner, prepared by Michael Dunn at the back of the field at this stage. As they now head by the Priory and make the run towards number eight. Four left to jump. Pace just increasing a shade. And it is Caligogo that's just stepping on it here to sweep beat. Hillview has just dropped a couple of lengths off them. And Do No Wrong has gone into third for the moment. Hillview just pushed along as they run towards this next one. Bally Grand next with Keeper Chris. Exit 10 and Big Business last of all as they get over that. And still Caligogo has the advantage. Driven in second position to try and stay with the favourites is Sweet Beat. And keeps on the girth for the moment with Do No Wrong. Justin Landy's representative in third place going perfectly well at this stage. But still a fair amount of ground to cover. Bally Grand and Keeper Chris trying to ghost a little closer on the inside. Hillview has lost his position completely. Exit 10 getting reminders and pushed along big business at the back as they now run towards the third last. Caligogo, the leader. Caligogo meets it well to Sweet Beat. About to be challenged for second by Do No Wrong. Driven in fourth position is Bally Grand. Keeper Chris likewise in fifth place. Big business is out of last. Is in sixth position as they come towards the second last. Exit 10 and Hillview the last two now. Caligogo with a 
big jump in second from Do No Wrong. Looking to try and lay a glove on the leader, but Calagogo keeps on strongly, and now getting a squeeze in second is Do No Wrong. Asked to try and challenge, and is getting a bit closer. Do No Wrong looking to get a blow in at this leader. Calagogo in third, Ballynagran and Keeper Chris. They are both staying on as they've got one flight left to jump. And coming inside the last two furlongs, Calagogo at the moment is holding the challenge of Do No Wrong as they're about to leave the ground for the last time in the opener. Calagogo, Do No Wrong got almost level there on landing. And now on the turn for home, just hanging fire a little bit on the outside is Do No Wrong. And now pressing on again is Calagogo. And Calagogo with a two length advantage to Do No Wrong. Looks as though he's got... Mark, mark it the way, in play. Handicap hurdle. Extended two miles and eight flights of hurdles ahead of them. And hang in there is one of the first to begin. Go a little wandering towards the outside as they go over flight number one. At the back of the field is Ingleby Hollow. And now they have a long run before they encounter the second flight taken in the home straight. And it is hang in there who has got the lead to snooker towards his outside who races in second position. Towards the inside rail, Wicked West is racing in third Hooper is in fourth. Camprond is in fifth position, followed by the grey last year's winner, Red Force One, just bumped along in the early stages to hold a midfield position towards the inside of Pajero. A couple of lengths to Goa Lil, who just wandered into that first flight of hurdles, but now making ground around the outside of Voice of Calm, who is sitting in midfield and in advance of Mrs. Hyde. On their outside is Competition, who's racing in advance of Valentino Dancer, and then the four-year-old Ambassador ambassador who is held up towards the rear of the field with Ingleby Hollow also ridden cold right out the back as they go over flight number two and hanging there was the leader over the second flight and now a short run on towards the third which was the last in a circuit's time hanging there and snooker on the outside the first two Wicked West was over in third and Hooper in the mauve is racing in fourth position Air Force one on the inside of Camprond and Pajero around the outside of the next wave of three a breakdown of two lengths back to competition who is racing in advance of Goa Lil on the inside voice of calm the red and white checks two lengths away to Mrs. Hyde who is up on the outside of Valentino Dancer as they go into their next turn Stonific has got two behind Ambassador is one of them and Ingleby Hollow and Matt Ennis still at the back of the field and they are racing ten lengths off the leader who is Joe Anderson on hang in there as they go towards halfway in the Betway summer handicap hurdle and it's hang in there who leads the parade is out in front by a length to in second place is snookered as they make the run on towards flight number four wicked west moving up towards the inside of snookered and then hooper is over that in fourth position air force one is on the inside racing next and then between horses is comprond next to the field is pajero and on the inside is voice of calm and they've now reached the middle flight taken down the back straight and this is the fourth from home all of them safely over that. Ingleby Hollow still the back marker. Ambassador still last but one and also still towards the rear of the field. As they go down the back straight is Stonific. They go towards the third from home. Hang in there, makes a mistake, blundered badly, was outjumped comprehensively on the inside by Wicked West. That's Wicked West with the help of the inside rail, who now goes ahead in front over Hang in there and Hooper around their outside. And then the team for JP McManus against the inside rail. That is Campron. He's racing half a length in advance of Pajero. Next in the field is the ridden long Red Force One. He's alongside Voice of Calm, who's left the rail for the first time. A wide trip down the hill for Valentino Dancer, but is travelling well at this point for Paddy Brennan. Stunific and Ambassador beginning to make a copycat move from the back of the field. They're now racing in front of the likes of Mrs. Hyde, a hard-driven goer Lil on the outside competition, who is trying to stay on and hang in there, has wrestled the lead once again away from the pursuers. And it's hang in there, who's going to rise at the second last with a narrow advantage again wasn't too fluent bad mistake by competition rail back in the field down towards the final flight Hooper towards the near side Pajero also Voltino Dancer and on the far side Camprond staying on is Stonific who's got the rail they're still about four in line they've got less than a furlong to go hang in there on the outside Valentino Dancer Stonific against the inside rail a three-way go 75 yards to run Stonific on the far side Stonific has won the play race course and Stables Anglesey Stakes, Group 3 for two-year-olds over six furlongs, and it's had men straight into the lead, followed by Andreas Vesalius, who moves 
In pursuit of his stable companion, they're closely followed by Beauty and Spire with two and a half lengths to the entertainer. And Daisy Piers, the sole filly in the lineup, has been pulled up. Continuing on towards the halfway point and coming right up the center of the track. It's Hadman with the narrow advantage over Andreas Vesalius and Beauty and Spire. And these are tracked a couple of lengths back and forth by the entertainer. Coming past the halfway stage in the Jebel Ali Racecourse and Stables Anglesey Stakes, it's Hadman. On the left is Beauty and Spire. On the right, pushed along is Andreas Vesalius. The three almost in a line. Coming under pressure is the entertainer. Racing to the final furling and a half. It's Hatman and Andreas Vesalius. Not much between them. Beauty and Spire now being called on for an effort on the far side. The three abreast. Racing inside the final 200 yards. Beauty and Spire gets to the front from Andreas Vesalius. Hatman can't go with them. Staying on is the entertainer. But it's Beauty and Spire protect. And off. Market, market in play. For this, the Bahrain Turf Series handicap, and uh, through the early stages, the former winner with hold, blue and white coloured jacket, looking for the front without a bit wider, Mildenberger, and deeper still. And now showing up ahead, Mancini as they race towards the first turn. Mancini takes them down past the stands, a length and a half clear. Scaramanga moves into second, and then with hold along the rails in third. That one just in advance of Margaret Dumont, who's up around the outside of Mildenberger and Global Heat who runs the rails. Further back then to Just Hubert and Zeban, the two who are in yellow colors, Zeban the black spots on the yellow jacket. Working back then to Indianapolis and uh, Rodrigo Diaz, Sleeping Lion and Lucky Deal. Whips them in under Holly Doyle and at this stage is 12 lengths off Mancini who takes them into the back straight and on towards the completion of the first uh, quarter of the race. They've nearly completed half a mile and uh, out in front it is Mancini showing by uh, around about a length or so over Margaret Dumont in second position. Scaramanga races in third, is pretty much side by side with withhold. Further back then to uh, Global Heat, who's down along the inside running rails with positioned a little wider out of that one at Mildenberger. Then Z band along the inside of Just Hubert, with still well back in the ruck, Rodrigo Diaz and Indianapolis with in second last place uh, Sleeping Lion and Lucky Deal is over to that one's inside. They've now passed the 10 marker under a mile and a quarter to go. They're on towards the halfway stage, and it is Mancini for trainer Ian Williams, who won this race last year with Rashoon. Mancini by three quarters of a length over Margaret Dumont in second. Withhold is now a clear third in advance of Scaramanga, who runs in fourth place for trainer Paul Nichols. A further length and a half back to the Godolphin runner Global Heat, and then Mildenberger in midfield with Z-Band, who's traveling well. That one over towards the inside. Just Hubert is racing next as they're now about to make the left-handed turn out of the back straight. Still Rodrigo Diaz is well back in the field with Indianapolis, Lucky Deal and Sleeping Lion. And they at this stage would be fully 12 to 15 lengths off the leader as they raced on past the seven furlong marker and they're now on the run back towards the home straight. Mancini, who's gone with enthusiasm throughout, shows in front by two lengths over Margaret Dumont who races in second. Withhold is in third. Then Scaramanga in fourth, not a great deal of change amongst the leading few throughout, with racing next Global Heat along the inside of Mildenberger. Then Z-Band, half a length back off him is just Hubert, as they swing on into the home straight, five furlongs left to travel. Rodrigo Diaz there, the green cap is over towards the inside of Indianapolis, but still well back in the field, and Lucky Deal and Sleeping Line remain the final two. Inside the final half a mile, they race in this Bahrain Turf Series handicap, and it is Mancini who's been there from the word go. Now shaken along is Margaret Dumont. The yellow sleeves away to the left is Scaramanga. With hold along the inside, a couple of lengths back off those is Global Heat from Mildenberger. Z-Band is now called upon for much more. Just Hubert down the outside. Rodrigo Diaz going for a daring run over towards the inner will have to angle out and does so. But Scaramanga kicks for home and at a vital time as well gets two lengths on Mancini. With also Rodrigo Diaz trying to run on now out into the clear. With hold is boxing on for pressure. Indianapolis down the wide outside. But Scaramanga by far and away has got first run. Rodrigo Diaz has gone off in pursuit but has got a couple of lengths to find and is running out of time. It is Scaramanga who shows in front in the hands of Sylvester de Sousa closing all the way Rodrigo Diaz but Scaramanga held him. Slim Hill, Mark market in play. And Bino on his favourite hunting ground leads Constancio as they make the run towards the first. Bino the winner of this race in 2017 and 2019 leading by half a length to Constancio 
in second position, Abby McCain. In third place early, Alkamar Charlotte Jones was on the outside of that one, Patine and uh, Jess Betty just going into third as they reach the first. Good jump by Bino. Patine was also very slick on the outside. Alkamar sits in fourth. Ayalani and Sufi are sharing fifth at the moment. And uh, in the back two positions, Oakmont and Becky Smith on the outside of Golden Town. So Bino, six times a Cartmel winner. Were he to make it seven today, he'll equal the record for most wins at the course. And he's out in front, this 12-year-old, by two lengths to Constancio, keeping tabs on the veteran in second place. Brani Frost and Bino comes to the first on the wood side, leads by two to Constancio. Patine is in third, recent market raisin winner Alkamar. And he completes a hat-trick today under Charlotte Jones in fourth position at the moment. And then in fifth is Sufi and Isabel Williams. Ayalani is next as they come to the third flight, the second one on the Woodside Straight. And Oakmont, a winner here earlier in the season, is settled second last. And Golden Town is just a little bit detached and is getting more detached, really struggling to go the gallop as uh, Bino takes them around seven acres with the lead of two and a half lengths to Constancio in second spot. Brani Frost leading Abby McCain with uh, Jess Betty and Patine in third position with Alkamar sitting in fourth. And then in fifth is Sufi, a little bit closer to the fourth horse now as they come to flight number four. And uh, Bino led Constancio over that. No major dramas, although Golden Town is a long way behind, has just cleared it, but would be oh, a good 15 lengths behind Oakmont in seventh position. And Oakmont's probably 12 behind Bino and Constancio as they go through where they started, passing the Priory. And on their final circuit, and they now race towards flight number five. And Bino is being pressed here by Constancio. They're on by four or five lengths to Patine. Sufi has just gone past Alkamar. They're fourth and fifth. Oakmont is now overtaking Ayalani. Here's the fourth last. Constancio led Bino. Bino jumped it better and got the lead back again on the run away from the flight. Bino and Brani Frost by only half a length. So Constancio in second. It's then three to Patine in third. Alkamar is next with Sufi. And then Oakmont, Ayalani is struggling to go the gallop. As they now make the run onto the Woodside Straight with three to jump in the William Hill Play Responsibly Female Jockeys Handicap Hurdle. And the twice previous winner, Bino, has the lead, but he's being pestered and has lots of company swarming around him. Bino, Constancio, closed down by Alkamar, going well right up the inside. Just had to switch there as Patine now commits and goes on. Patine and Jess Betty taking over, running to the second last. There's still well over half a mile to go here. Patine is leading Bino. Alkamar going third. Constancio looks like he shot his bolt in fourth place. And then Sufi, Oakmont, still with a little bit to do from where he is. And then Ayalani, but Patine has the lead. Alkamar sent past Bino into second and now in pursuit of the leader. Patine at the bottom of the handicap here, leading the way. Alkamar, though, within two lengths in second. Bino is in third. Oakmont has gone into fourth and continues to stay on. Patine flat out in the lead. Alkamar, hands and heels in second, running down towards the last and inching closer to the leader. Here's the final flight. Less than two furlongs to go. Alkamar comes to challenge Patine, who jumped it like a hero on the inside but Alkamar has got a bit left and now takes over. Alkamar has gone past Patine under Charlotte Jones, really confidently ridden, just hampered Patine there, just lugging left-handed. But Alkamar has the advantage and is... Market, market green, in green. play. And Torquish Cheek is sent into the early lead by Tom Bellamy and establishes a break of a couple of lengths over Captain Tomcat. Gives chase in second. Lord Bryan is in third as they go into the first turn and a long run before they encounter the first of the 14 fences. The leader, Talk is cheap by three lengths. To Captain Tomcat racing in second, Lord Bryan is in third. Sebastian Beach on the inside of Mercy and Prince in fourth and fifth. Two lengths away, Darling Malte is racing in sixth position. And then Frankie de Berlay, who's followed by Top of the Cotswolds as they go over the first of the 14 fences, all safely over. Outpaced at the back of the field early is Royal Village, slightly detached. Last but one is Temple Park. They go on then towards the first of the open ditches, which is fence number two. And Talk is cheap, comes to it with a lead of three lengths over Mercy and Prince, who took it in second place. They all stream over it safely. In third position on the inside is Captain Tom Cat, followed by Lord Bryan, who is racing in fourth position as they go over the third fence down the back straight. 
Darling Malte towards the outside of then Sebastian Beach and a break back to Frankie de Boulay and top of the Cotswolds and then Pink Eyed Pedro as they go over the second of the open ditches, the last of the quartet of fences taken in the back straight. Royal Village is still the back marker. Still towards the rear is Accelerator Express together with Temple Park and also the Mayor Dance Idol is in the last group of four as they now begin to make the run down the hill. And it is Talk is Cheap and Tom Bellamy who lead the way on the long run now towards the first of three fences taken in the home straight. Darling Malte and Harry Cobden have now moved into second. Mercy and Prince and Jack Quinlan in third. Lord Bryan and Sean Bowen in fourth position. Sebastian Beach is racing in fifth as they make the turn into the home straight. Then on the inside is Captain Tom Cat in advance of Frankie de Berlay and top of the Cotswolds with Fire Away racing on the outside of That's a Given as they go over fence number five, the first of the three taken in the home straight. Pink Eye Pedro and Solomon Gray were next in the field followed by Dance Idol and a pushed along Temple Park as they go over the middle fence down the home straight at which Pink Eye Pedro got, was a little low and a little skew whiff in the air and they go on now towards the fence which is the last in a circuit's time and Talk is Cheap is still out in front as the field of 16 make their way past the stands and it's Talk is Cheap who leads them at halfway in the Betway Summer Plate to Darling Monte in second and Mercy and Prince is in third some four lengths away Captain Tomcat is racing in fourth Lord Brian is in fifth Sebastian Beach is in sixth Frankie de Belay is in seventh Pink Eye Pedro is in eighth on the inside in ninth on the outer is top of the Cotswolds race in 10th position is Solomon Gray in 11th on the inside dance idol 12th around the outside trying to make ground is fire away and then that's a given who's followed at the back of the pack by Accelerator Express who's only got two behind him Temple Park and also Royal Village who've always 20 been seconds the last duo. and this is fence number eight and talk is cheap attacked it and jumped it really well he's out in front by two and a half lengths to Darling Malte in second and Mercy and Prince 10 seconds 9 seconds Eight seconds. A little closer. Next to the field is uh, Pink Eye Pedro on the outside of Frankie de Boulay and then Sebastian Beach. Out Zero the seconds. So they go over the penultimate open ditch. They're all safely over. A new back marker, Lord Bryan, has very badly lost his place through the last half mile and he's now tailing off last. They go towards a fifth from home. Darling Malte out wide, almost joins Talk is Cheap towards the inner as they go on now towards the fourth from home. The final open ditch. Lord Bryan will be pulled up before four out. But the other 15 are still going, but struggling badly now is Fire Away, who is totally tailed off, and he's now eased at the back of the field. So they begin to make the run down the hill, and Captain Tomcat has sighed his way through and has taken the lead. Darling Malte into second. On the inside, Mercy and Prince as they make the run now down the hill and Captain Tomcat has now got the lead to Darling Malte on his outside who races in second and then Pink Eye Pedro on the outside third. Mercy and Prince followed by Frankie de Berlay, the Grey Solomon Grey on their outside Sebastian Beach. Temple Park is staying on. Royal Village from a long, long way back is picking up. Pulled up is that's a given as they come on now towards a third from home and Captain Tomcat has the lead but there's a host of pursuers Dance Idol, another one pulled up at the back of the field. They're now over the third from home and towards the near side. Pink Eye Pedro and Frankie de Belay with Captain Tomcat over on the far side, only third best. Temple Park is staying on. Then Darling Malte, top of the Cotswolds, has pulled up two out and they come towards the final friends. And it's Frankie de Belay who's out and clear, bidding to give trainer Peter Bowen a record seventh win in the Betway summer plate. Frankie de Belay and James Bowen are going clear on the run. To the line, Frankie de Belay. The white cap coming through strongly towards the near side. Flash Betty is kept going. Bungley's now back in third. Champagne Dial trying to run out deep, but it's Hollow Steel who leads inside the final furlong. Johnson, one of the outsiders, the first to show from Make a Challenge, and these are followed by the nose banded logo hunters. They see out the first furlong. Handy is the Green Greenland's winner, Gustavus Weston. They're tracked by Measure of Magic and Monista with at the back of the field romantic proposal and Eros and Psyche. Blistering their way towards the halfway stage, and it's Strong Johnson in front of Gustavus Weston, make a challenge ridden along. Coming there on the far side is Logo Hunter, who's tracked by Measure of Magic. On the right is Monista, just behind him in the grey jacket is...
Romantic proposal and then Eros and Psyche spread across the track as they hit the furlong pole and the Paddy Power Sapphire Stakes. Action on the near side, Monish and Gustavus West and these two, Julan, inside the fine 150 yards. Racing accident. Market in play. A little bit in the fine watch club handicap stakes as they make their way through the first of the eight furlongs, the mile trip in all. Stunning beauty is prominent, got away from the gates much better today than she did at Royal Ascot. Prominent though in the run as well is over right there in the light colored jacket, so the gray. There then followed by finest sound in the yellow and black colors. Then uh, towards the near side as we look at them, stunning beauty followed then by Rifleman in the darker blue. Then Trey Fleur, another one in blue colours towards the outer. Beat Le Bon pulling for its head towards the outside. Accidental agent, very sweaty on this hot day. And Irish Admirals at the rear of the field. So they make their way down through the first three furlongs or so. And setting a relatively uh, sedate gallop out in front is Overright. Overright, the leader by a length or so to Stunning Beauty in second. Then Finest Sound, who lobs along in third. Followed then by Rifleman, who's covered up. There then followed by Trey Fleur towards the centre of the track. Beat Le Bon is racing antisocially there in the white and green colours towards the rear of the field Irish Admiral in the yellow and black and accidental agent the orange cap is just about the back marker making their way now inside the final three furlongs and it's Overright who continues to lead but still going nicely on the outside is Finest Sound here now comes Trey Fleur who's trying to be uh, produced for a run Beat Le Bon is getting going towards the far side then Stunning Beauty the near side Rifleman is travelling strongly but needs an out accidental agent trying to get going as well well inside the final furlong and a half they go plenty of chances Finest Sound just about the leader so on the near side Stunning Beauty then Overright who's still and they're pitching Irish Admirals finishing off Rifleman an accidental agent as well anybody's race inside the closing stages accidental agent from the back and Rifleman accidental agent the former Queen Anne Stakes winner Market 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 in play The diligent Harry on his turf debut today leads the slightly larger group down the center of the track. The three following him over there are Royal Crusade in the all royal blue colors, Tab D last year's winner, and Happy Romance last year's super sprint winner. Meanwhile, down the near side, Method shows up ahead over Royal Commando and the favorite Kings Lynn. Heading on down towards halfway, the white jacket this side, Method, the red and green the far side of Diligent Harry, they are the leading pair, they're racing wide apart. Diligent Harry being followed over there by Tab D, who travels well, as does Royal Crusade and Happy Romance. Method is now shaken along towards the near side, as his, his closest pursuer, Royal Commando and Kings Lynn, the purple jacket, red sleeves, now beginning a run. Now the two groups merge, racing on down inside the final furlong and a half, and up ahead, Tab D, now with the white blaze down his face, moving through to challenge for the lead from Diligent Harry. Happy Romance is staying on, further back to Method. Kings Lynn is beaten inside the final 200 yards, they come, it is Tab D, down on the stand side of Happy Romance and Diligent Harry up in between the pair. Happy Romance, the far side of Tab D. Happy Romance. Hill, Cumbria, Market Cup, in play. Hurdle, 11 flights to be jumped by seven runners. And Jack's last hope and Callum Gilhooley are the first two to show, going off quite steadily to flight number one. Jack's last hope, Callum Gilhooley, both equally fluent. In third position, Imperial Sachin's Connor O'Farrell, the black with the white stars. And then in fourth early is Ask Paddington and Harry Reid. And the back three, Shetland Bus, Native Fighter, and Morriman is last of all as they run towards their second. Two flights over on the wood side today. And uh, no dramas at that. Callum Gilhooley on the outside of the 12 year old 11 time winner, Jack's Last Hope. These two match strides with Ask Paddington sharing third position with Imperial Sachins, running two by two at the moment with a Shetland bus next on the inside of Native Fighter, a winner here at the end of May, and uh, third over a shorter trip last month. Charlotte Jones looking for a double, and so are the owners, and so is uh, the trainer as well. Native Fighter is just in sixth position. Morriman and Abby McCain last of all, as they now reach the third. Be the last in another two circuits time. And all popping over that neatly with uh, Callum Gilhooley, first past the post at Stratford last time. That uh, disqualified by the clerk of the scales and uh, sharing the lead with Jack's last hope as they pass the Priory for the first time in the William Hill Cumbria Crystal Cup at a, a gentle and probably sensible pace. It is uh, Jack's last hope and Callum Gilhooley, just Jack's last hope, crossing the road there in third position. Ask Paddington on the inside of Imperial Sachins is only five lengths first to last with Shetland Bus native fighter the next two, leaping over the fourth and Morriman took it nicely in last position. About to go around the grammar school bend. And as they do so, the white hoop on the red jacket, Callum Gilhooley under Charlie Deutsch. 
disputing with Brian Hughes and Jack's Last Hope. That's ahead onto the Woodside Straight. And as they do so, Ask Paddington is then in third position. A winner at Hexham in April. And the horse that finished second in that race is following him in this race. The chestnut with a white face, Shetland Bus, just running in fifth. Imperial Sachin splits those two as they now come to number five. It was their first. And Jack's Last Hope and Callum Gilhoody, the back two still native fighter, and uh, Morimer, neither in any hurry at this stage. In between these two flights of hurdles, heading towards the sixth of the 11. And it is Callum Gilhooley and Jack's Last Hope. They are still one and two. Good jumps, the pair of them there. Little bit untidy in last position was uh, Morriman, but okay. So Jack's Last Hope and Callum Gilhooley still the first two here with Ask Paddington following their every move in behind, running for trainer Tristan Davidson. And then Imperial Sachins, Connor O'Farrell looks for a double. Ditto Denise Foster after taking the first race. And they're in fourth position with Imperial Sachins at the moment. Shetland Bus continues to follow those. Trainer Justin Landy had the runner-up in the first. And then Native Fighter clearing the flight that'll be the last next time around. That was number seven of the 11. And Imperial Sachins is driven and gets a couple of swift reminders there. Seem to respond to them. And sticks on the outside of Ask Paddington, sharing third place as they pass the Priory for the last time in the William Hill Cumbria Crystal Cup. Jack's last hope. Dictating along with Callum Gilhooley and still followed by Ask Paddington and Imperial Sachin, Shetland Bus, a native fighter, fifth and sixth, no more than three lengths off the pace. It's about another four to Morriman. Here is flight number eight, Callum Gilhooley, Jack's last hope. Imperial Sachin's wasn't great at that. Ask Paddington was uh, quicker in third and Imperial Sachin's driven again. Shetland Bus, 20 is seconds. And then native fighter, Morriman is still last of all. Turning towards the woodside for the last time. Three left to jump. Jack's last hope. Ten seconds. Nine seconds. Eight victory. seconds. Callum Gilhooley alongside. Not much to choose between these two. Ask Paddington waiting to pounce in behind with Imperial Sachins. Still under a bit of... Zero pressure. seconds. Three out. Shetland Bus stalks those. Then Native Fighter over the third last. And Native Fighter a little bit slow through the air. Got a tap behind the saddle from Charlotte Jones just to get him to pick up a little bit. Morriman is still in last as they run to two out. Callum Gilhooley, Jack's last hope. Ask Paddington going well. Imperial Sachin's on the outside and Shetland Bus following in fifth. And then Native Fighter pushed along in sixth place. Morriman is still in last. So Callum Gilhooley has won the battle with Jack's last hope and goes on by two. Imperial Sachin's is in second. Ask Paddington going into third. Jack's last hope for Shetland Bus trying to get in the picture and then Native Fighter in sixth place. Heading down towards the last two furlongs. One to jump. Callum Gilhooley has a lead of a length and a half. Shetland Bus is going very well following. Ask Paddington the outside of Imperial Sachin's. Here's the last. Callum Gilhooley over first. Shetland Bus is in second and he's not really blinked yet. Sean Quinlan as they now turn into the home straight. Callum Gilhooley driven. Shetland Bus just humoured in second place. Imperial Sachin's in third. Native Fighters plugging on but can't get there. And now Shetland Bus is asked to come and win the race and go past Callum Gilhooley and go past Callum Gilhooley he does. His customary front running role. Jamie Hamilton and Giovanni Change have a lead of a couple of lengths. Being closed down however on the run to the first by Taste the Fear. They'll cross 12 flights in the Heed Johanship Betway handicap hurdle. Giovanni Change over the first with the lead to Taste the Fear over in second. The Distant Lady in third place, followed by Ask Henry in fourth as they're already over flight number two. And the back markers are Byron Flyer and Bally Ellis. So just over two complete circuits of the course ahead of them. And it's Giovanni Change, twice successful here at Market Race in April, who leads the way. He's out in front by a length and a half to taste the fear in second. Just over two lengths away, the distant lady in third. Three lengths back to Ask Henry in fourth. And a couple more lengths to Bally Ellis on the inside of Byron Flyer. So they make the run around the turn and on towards the back straight and on towards flights three, four and five. Giovanni Change leads by a couple of lengths as they go inside the final two miles and three furlongs. Giovanni Change extending that advantage now to about two and a half lengths to Taste the Fear in second. Leader just landed a little flat-footed, but not a serious error at all. And now they're beginning to get a little strung out as they go on towards flight number four.
Giovanni Change, Taste the Fear, and The Distant Lady are the first three as they rise at the fourth flight. Leader was very good there. He was very quick in the air, Giovanni Change, and it carried him a further length in front of, in second, Taste the Fear. Distant Lady in third, Ask Henry in fourth, then Byron Flyer and Bally Ellis, and they're over the final flight taken down the back straight. So Giovanni Change continues to bowl along in front. Another long run on the flat now before they encounter flight number six. And they've very nearly completed the circuit in the Heed Your Hunship Betway Handicap Hurdle. And Giovanni Change and Jamie Hamilton still have that three-length lead over Sam Twiston Davis and Taste the Fear racing in second. The Distant Lady and Keelan Woods in third. The Distant Lady who went over the extended three and a quarter miles at Newton Abbott last time out. So certainly no questions about her stamina in this test today. Byron Flyer moving up then towards the outside of Ask Henry now in dispute of fourth and fifth places. And Bally Ellis continues through the back marker. Bally Ellis, who won earlier on in the year at Fakenham. On then towards the sixth they go. And a short run then on to the seventh. And it's Giovanni Change. It comes to the next. Wrap the top bar there. Not for the first time, just landed a little hind legs first. On quickly towards flight number seven. Giovanni Change. Better this time. To taste the fear over in second, the distant lady in third. Ask Henry and Byron Flyer. And slightly detached now is Bally Ellis. So they come up past us with a circuit to go. And Giovanni Change still leads the way. He's antisocial, but that's the way he wins his races out in front and still leads by a couple of lengths to taste the fear in second and the distant lady in third. And now they go once again up towards the back straight and on towards the fifth from home. Giovanni Change to taste the fear has always been his shadow in second. Taste the fear bidding to taste success for the third time in 2021, having already won at Hexham and at Utoxeter. They go then towards the fifth last, Giovanni Change. With his lead reduced to only a length and a half, comes towards the flight, got in a little close. So too did Taste the Fear in second. Two lengths away, the distant lady is in third. Trying to close up, Byron Flyer to the outside of Ask Henry. And now there's a break of about four lengths to Bally Ellis, who's just been niggled along to try and keep tabs on the other five. Four from home. And it was Giovanni Change who led the way to Taste the Fear in second. The distant lady comes off the bit and is ridden along for the first time by Keelan Woods. Byron Flyer continues to creep closer in those white and purple colours towards the outside, but he flattened that flight of hurdles, hardly lifted a leg at the third from home, but it didn't check his momentum. Now they've got a long run on the flat again before they rise at the second last, and Giovanni Change still leads the way as he's done so far throughout the whole contest to taste the fear in second. The distant lady on the inside of Byron Flyer, who continues to creep closer. Byron Flyer, a winner of 12 races under all codes. And now beginning to get just onto the coattails of the leaders. Ask Henry is in fifth, and in sixth is Bally Ellis, and they make the turn in. And Giovanni Change now asks for more by Jamie Hamilton. But he hasn't shaken off the attentions. 20 of seconds. Pursuer, Tate Sophia, who travels better at this point, and they're inside the final two and a half furlongs. They have a break of three lengths now over Byron Flyer and Ask 10 Henry, seconds. Nine, nine eight they're seconds. Right the second last. Taste Sophia jumps to the lead. Ask Henry into second. Giovanni Change may be emptying towards. The inside Zero the seconds. Line, a run in of a furlong and a half, and taste the fear. And Sam Twist and Davis have the lead on the long run in. That lead now is about two and a half lengths over Giovanni Change and Ask Henry. And back in fourth is Byron Flyer. Another half furlong to go. Taste the fear is out in front, and Taste the fear wins for the third time this year. Taste the fear. Mark, the mark it in play. Stakes. And a little bit slow to go was time to rumble. Also a little bit slow to go, Golden Uke. Very fast start by Urchin Tra in the striped jacket. Also racing prominently near side is just Sumi with Lincoln Dream right up there. So too Lotus Rose and Firebomb down the centre. Royal Blue Jacket Golden Romance is next in the field, followed by Super Cub in the orange and yellow checks. Cause I can towards the back with Golden Duke and time to rumble. And Taipei is now the overall back marker. And they're past halfway, approaching the final two furlongs. Urchin Trow with just Sumi towards the near side. 3D 
Deep Lotus Rose gets a squeeze. Firebomb in the cross belted jacket. Super Cub five deep starts to pick up in the center of the track. Cause I can red cap behind those. Down into the dip back towards the final furlong now. Lotus Rose the red and white. Urchin Tra stripe jacket. Firebomb in the cross belts down the center. Super Cub the yellow and orange. They go inside. Gates back and they're off Market and racing in play. for the Rick and Mary Hambro Aphrodite Philly Stakes over the uh, the mile and a half and making their way through the early stages. I leaned over in the light blue and pink is prominent, so too is Golden Pass in the uh, blue and maroon colours. Those two are just about sharing leadership. Golden Pass now just going on to I leaned over. Then Oriental Mystique, who's racing in third. Similar colours there for Free Wind, but uh, Free Wind as a, a white blaze on the face, which just aids identification. Then we've got Black Lotus towards the outside in the terracotta colours with a black cap, and then towards the inside, Abstinence, the flashy chestnut, and then back at the rear of the field is Talbea. So they make their way towards the turn into the straight. There's still well over a mile to go here, and it's Golden Pass who's out in front. Leads by about a length or so to Eileen Dover with all that really good bumper form, of course, racing in second in the Pam Sly colours, and Oriental Mystique who's covered up on the rail. Then Black Lotus is three wide round the turn, and then Free Wind, the white face, followed by Talbea in the blue Shadwell stud colours, who's also taken that turn a little bit wide. And Abstinence, another white face uh, wearer or sporter, is towards the rear of the field. So they're making their way down towards the final seven furlongs. They're on the uh, straight to home, and it's Golden Pass that leads to Eileen Dover in second, then Black Lotus racing in third, Oriental Mystique right up the inside rail, and then Free Wind, followed then by Talbea in the blue, and Abstinence just getting a little uh, tap down the neck there to try and maintain touch as they make their way inside the final three quarters of a mile. And it's Golden Pass, who's uh, proved herself at this trip and at this level already with that run at Pontefract uh, recently, leads by about a length or so to Eileen Dover in second, then Black Lotus now just being driven along, there then followed by Oriental Mystique who continues to be covered right up on that rail. Then Free Window could do with an out appearing as well. Tal Bear is racing a little bit wider but has clear running. And then at the back of the field, Abstinence down towards the closing stages they come now. Just over two and a half furlongs left to go in the Aphrodite Stakes. And it's Golden Pass that leads. Eileen Dover now driven along in second. Free Wind, the white face, has now been extricated and is making headway. Then Oriental Mystique who's got a gap or two. And Tal Bear is working up a good head of steam down the centre of the track. Inside the final furlong and a half they go. Free Wind just about the leader. Golden Pass trying to battle back. Talbea's run now coming to North. Abstinence is staying on. Then Oriental Mystique as they go inside the final half furlong now. Golden Pass and Free Wind. Free Wind the far side. Golden Pass in here. Racing up towards the line. Golden Pass. Nothing if not game. And she Take two. And they're off. And this Ma is the William Market in play. Chase. They'll jump 12 fences on the run towards the first of them and Golden Card has the early advantage to Silk and Moonlight, Mike McCann top of the rocks handy with Istimrar and in sixth position my Renaissance followed by Elixir and Shabbat Dadadu as they get to fence number one and, uh, and uh, down at the first obstacle Sweet Flora, Sweet Flora has gone and keep an eye on Alison Clark who's on the ground at the moment but the rest of them have all managed to clear the second OK. And taking the grammar school bend, it is Golden Card that leads to Top of the Rocks, Mike McCann, Silk and Moonlight, Istin Ron, My Renaissance, Elixir, Shabba, Dada, Do. And No Ceiling is towards the back of the field. And uh, No Ceiling is just racing in advance of Cool Valley and War at Sea. The loose sweet floor is coming right up amongst the field as they take the water jump. Three more plain fences to jump on the wood side. Uh, Alison Clark, Alison Johnson, I should say, just being attended to, just keeping half an eye on, on that as they now come towards the fifth obstacle and Golden Card and Jack Tudor leading top of the rocks, Mike McCann to the outside, followed by Istimra. A Silken Moonlight's also handy. My Renaissance, the winner of this race three years ago as they get over at number six. So that's half of the jumping done and uh, making the run away from the Woodside, with Golden Card leading by two and a half lengths to Top of the Rocks and Henry Brook in second position. Mike McCann is then running on the outside of Silk and Moonlight in third and fourth. Istim Rather Grey and Red Sam Coulter is next in the field. My Renaissance on that one's outside, followed by Shabba Dada Do, the pink Brian Hughes. War at Sea is following with Elixir. First Revolution is towards the back of the field with no ceiling and the driven along Cool Valley. As they make them, they're going to be bypassing the plane fence, uh, certainly as Alison Johnson continues to receive treatment, as they now go past the Priory, and as they do so, 
It is Golden Card that has the advantage. Golden Card is leading to Top of the Rocks. Mike McCann, Istim Ra with Silken Moonlight on the inside of that war at sea, just trying to improve as they're waved around this next obstacle. And all managing to get around that okay and heading on to the open ditch. This is the fifth last. And Golden Card just got in a little bit tight at that. Top of the Rocks, Mike McCann and Istim Ra trying to burrow up the inside, getting a lot closer as they head around the turn towards the wood side. In midfield, it's first revolution, my renaissance still with Elixir next, and War at Sea continuing to improve a little. The grey on the outside, no ceiling is still towards the back with Shabbat Dadadu's lost a place or two, and Cool Valley is last of all. But Golden Card pressing on again. Here's the fourth last, the water jump. Golden Card over to War at Sea in second. A mistake at that from first revolution. Istimra is in third, then Silken Moonlight, top of the rock, struggling to hold a spot. Elixir in the green, trying to get closer as again there. Closer to Golden Card over that jump, running to the second last. Shabadadadu trying to get into it again on the outside, but still with a few lengths to find as War at Sea in the hands of Jonathan Bewley and Istimra, the two that go on now. Golden Card is looking out of contention now, is just struggling in, in third position, trying to come back. Elixir, Silken Moonlight, it's War at Sea that leads. Brian Hughes on Shabadadadu still making some ground on the outside. Golden Card is trying to get himself back into it again as they've done all of the jumping now and it is at war at sea the gray for george bewley jonathan bewley in the saddle silken moonlight is chasing hard in second under Derek fox then golden card my renaissance and shabba dadadu from elixir but it is still at war at sea that has the advantage here about to take the left hander down the straight with a two length lead silken moonlight in second my renaissance still staying on in third place jonathan england it's getting quite urgent now for war at sea my Renaissance charging in company with Silken Moonlight. They're wearing the leader down. It is still War at Sea that leads, but Silken Moonlight getting closer with my Renaissance. Here comes the line, a photo of it. Go racing in Yorkshire Summer Festival, handicap stakes. Briardale is straight to the front here. Also prominent towards the inside is Zookeeper, Delft Crescent between horses, the grey, and settling at the back of the four-hour field is Samim. They travel up through the first furlong and a half. Briardale, the green jacket with the yellow stars, chevrons on the sleeves, out wide. And on the inside, the grey horse, Delft Crescent, in the dartboard jacket with the red cab. Tucked in behind the zookeeper in the silver colours. And at the back of the field, Samim in the green with a blue disc and blue cap. Only three lengths separate the runners then as they travel towards the end of the back stretch. They're closing in on the final six and a half furlongs. And it's Briardale who leads. Bridale by just over a length to Delft Crescent and Samim makes uh, ground towards the outside to go second. The zookeeper is relegated to be fourth. On the turn back towards the home straight, then coming back towards the final five furlongs now. And it's Bridale controlling it by a length to Samim, who just gets a bit of a squeeze on the turn. Delft Crescent towards the inside and Zookeeper at the back of the forerunner field. All to play for as they head down the home straight, back towards the final half mile they come. Briardale and Danny Tudhope in front by just over a length. Delft Crescent now drawn out by Conor Murta. Samim's under maximum pressure for David Allen. The back marker, Zookeeper, Franny Norton also being shaken up. Bridale's travelling smoothly here. Back towards the final three and inside it they go. He's having a peek behind Danny Tudhope. Briardale in front as is yet to be asked a question. Leads by a couple. Delft Crescent gets reminders in second. Zookeeper now back in third. Samim has run no sort of race at all back in fourth. Briardale now asked to extend as they come back towards the final furlong and a half and in play on the far side speaking colors the top weight marbling high time you won previous winner for hoy and major power the near side being followed by big gossy grammatis that love and rough diamond good night girl next with midnight fire and laugh a minute send my love to you is followed by fastnet crown ice cold and alex and then gulliver who's well back at this point heading towards the halfway stage wonder elzam at the rear it's master mad just heading them off beginning the run towards the final two and a half furlongs doing well on this side is major power and pulse of shanghai big gossy with the run in between horses then rough diamond fastened crown high time you one makes ground the far side and then good night girl laugh a minute midnight fire gramata major power hits the front on the near side from high time you one trying to challenge then master matt they're inside the final furlong and the petty power scotty premier handicap